amazing. Um, okay, right, we're going to kick off. So, hi everyone. Um, we are welcoming you to the wonderful young people in the lead team. So we have a real mix of um, of attendees today. We've got um, attendees from the National Lottery Community Fund, so some amazing staff. So welcome all of you. It's the first time that some of you are meeting this incredible team that I'm lucky enough to work with. So welcome all of you guys. And also a big welcome to some of our um, external guests. So they are from a funders network that um, we're all working together to work collaboratively to look at how we can involve youth voice in across all funding. So all the work that we're doing at the lottery and how we can um, share that learning across everyone. So a really exciting audience, but even more exciting is what we've got in store for you. So um, I hope you really enjoy the session and you can see why I think I have the best job in the world from now on. So um, I'm going to hand over to Jemima to um, kick off. Brilliant. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. I hope you've all been having a really nice day. Um, I think our day has been obviously technical difficulties galore, but I'm hoping everything is going to go really, really smoothly today. Okay. So, a little introduction to who we are, first of all. We are the Young People in Lead team, um, a team of 12 brilliant young people. Obviously, I'm a bit biased, but I think they're all brilliant. Um, we're from the, from the National Lottery Community Fund, and um, we have our, our members of the team are from across the UK, so we've got some really good representation in the team. Um, so I would say we're a team of like very passionate, inspiring young people. We cover a lot of different areas, we have different expertise. So mental health, homelessness, environmental issues, disability and inclusivity, and empowering young people, or um, empowering young women are a few of them, just to name some. And I know there's going to be a lot more. Um, there's apologies from two of our team members who I'm hoping one of them can still try and get in today. But um, so if Kane and Jack will not be able to be here today, but on to brighter things, I'm very, very excited to hear everything, to hear everything and to, to present to you guys today, because I think you guys are really going to love what we're saying. So to kick it off, I'm Jemima, I'm 23 years old, I'm from London, and my passion is environmental issues, especially climate change. I've been working with the Wildlife Trust. Um, and that's kind of what I bring to the table. Uh, uh, I'm Danny, I'm 24, I'm from... Uh, I'm a ambassador work to a homeless charity uh, who house young people with household solvers, which are usually adults. Hi, I'm Amelia, I'm 18. And um, I'm from up in the Yorkshire Dales. I'm also really passionate, passionate about environmental issues. And I currently work full time as a farm advisor, working with farmers to reduce their impact on the environment and water courses. Hey, hey I'm Kiana. I'm 21 and I'm from Leeds. And I'm really passionate about making sure young women get their voices heard and that they're facilitated for them to make changes. Hi, I'm Kenny. Um, I'm from London. I work um, with Fight for Peace and we're an organisation that uses sports and martial arts to help young people um, re realise their potential. And my passion is, I'd say, sports and allowing young people to reach their full potential within sports. Hi, my name's Lauren. I'm from London and I'm really passionate about youth mental health and wellbeing. I've done lots of work both inside and outside of the National Lottery and I'm really excited to be here today. Hello, my name is Ashley. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Bristol. I am passionate about young people and ensuring that their voices are heard in the local community. Hi, Hi everyone. It's lovely to meet you all. My name's Kimberly. I'm 23 years old from Hull. Um, I work on a national lot of community funded project called Visibility. I'm passionate about supporting young people with disabilities into employment. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 17 years old and I'm from East London. I volunteer at Head Start and my biggest passions are mental health, 
and youth involvement in the community and the workplace. Hi, I'm Regina. I'm 25. I am a full-time worker at a charity called Youth and Charity called Skyway. I am the Youth Quality and Impact Officer, and my passion is empowering vulnerable, disadvantaged young people. Um, we're now going to move on to what makes a good quality youth program presentation. And any questions that you might have, um, please put it in the chat box, and they will be addressed at the end. Can everyone see this? Yep. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here it goes. Can you see the screen okay, Lauren? Oh, no, sorry. Um, my finger's frozen. No um, worries. It's okay. I'll, I'll ab live Can without I... the screen. Um, I think this is... Kiana? Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry, this one's Kiana. Yeah. Can you hear me? That's cool. Can you hear me, Sophia? Yeah. Oh, Kiana, yeah, go for it. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> The young people in the lead team met up in Birmingham to discuss what a quality youth project was. To do this, we wrote down all the positive aspects of the different projects we've been part of and combined these points to create key points. The presentation gives a deeper explanation of these points, our thoughts and our ideas. Okay, this looks like my slide. Um, so out of these 12 points, we now put them into four key categories. So these are equality, opportunity, community and empowerment. And these are really the key themes that we think should be in all youth projects and to really deliver youth voice in those organisations. Um, so we're going to go through them. Uh, we've each got a point which relates to our personal project we're working on um, and we'll explain them more to you as we go on. So um, firstly, before we are going to explain all of our points, what we wanted to do was use Mentimeter to ask you a few questions. Um, unfortunately, Mentimeter is not working, so we'd like you to answer a question that I'm going to put in the chat, which is what do you think makes a good quality youth project? Um, so I'm just going to post that in the chat now. Um, you can all either just write one word or a sentence. That's entirely up to you. Um, but we've done this in all of our sessions so far. That's so that we can collect the data and then share it out with the wider teams. So if you could all contribute, then that'd be great. Thank you. This is where we should have devised a song to sing to everyone. <laughs> so I'll put in some elevator music. <laughs> you did that last time, didn't you? <laughs> I went Spanish with my elevator music last time. It was quite, quite enjoyable little break. So I think um, everybody has put something. Uh, oh, I've just got one more. Um, but I think now that we've got that, we can um, now pass over to the opportunity back to the presentation. Um, so thank you for all doing that for us. The first category we're going to talk about is opportunity. Um, now I'm going to talk about the definition, I think a dictionary definition of opportunity, which is a time or set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. I think we believe one of the first things that we kind of identified is that a good quality youth programme has opportunity for the young people in it to inspire personal development confidence to provide opportunities for them to go further in the field and to develop new skills and to provide some training. 
Okay, so the a good quality youth program inspires personal development and confidence. Now, what does this look like? For me, my personal experience was working, being a participant and then being a young leader on a project called My Place, which offered me additional opportunities to go on their youth council and to then come aboard and go to different kinds of national lobbying and has ultimate, ultimately led me to the position I am currently in with the young people in lead team. Now, without this um, programme, without the opportunities that they provided me, I never would have been able to come into the role that I currently am on. My Place focuses on well-being and personal growth for young people. It's aimed at young people with mental health issues and also unemployed young people. Um, so it it um it um inspires them to make better of their current situations, and then to if they want to have the opportunity to go on and do something else in the field. As I said before, sleep is a project which aims at tackling homelessness and in part of the work is to provide opportunities and experiences for young people to develop new skills like running sessions or residential skills, support networks within sleep and, up, and know they're not alone. Uh, the focus on improving wellbeing, team working skills, confidence and a variety more of the fact skills like cooking and Um, hi. So, um, I volunteered with Our Bright Future since 2016 and what they have offered me is lots of training. So I've done a two year apprenticeship with them because school just wasn't for me so it was very hands on. But then I've also done lots of soft skill development so public speaking and like just communicating and networking which has been really valuable for me in my role. I think training gives you the basis to move on to different things and especially for people who don't have a strong educational background like me school just didn't work for me so being supported in training that suits you is Oh, Amelia, I think you're cutting out. There's a blessing in disguise living on a farm. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can, I can, I can. Hi, sorry. Um, uh, where was I? <laughs> just, just your last point will be fine, Hun, I think. We got to your last point. Okay. Sorry, perks of living on a farm. Um, oh, we might have to come back to Amelia. Oh, that's such a shame. But hopefully you can I all think see I've said everything. Okay. Unless I'm just being you. <laughs> oh, so um we've put together some questions to ask yourself and providing opportunities to young people um so these questions are are new and relevant opportunities for experiences provided to young people um is, is there a focus on personal growth and development and are we providing training or recognized qualifications so we've put the questions together underneath each heading and we will share with them with you after so now it's empowerment for Kiana. Empowerment was something that we recognised was extremely important. It is the process of becoming stronger and more confident. And we recognise that a good quality youth project enhances this. Um, within this, a good quality youth project develops transferable skills to encourage empowerment. 
An example of this would be Getaway Girls. I currently work at Getaway Girls and a part of it we have created a social enterprise project and community programmes. This includes a photo booth that we rent to different organisations and this has helped to develop the girls' transferable skills such as confidence and resilience and the impact of this is that it's give the girls um, the strength and the confidence to be able to set up their own businesses such as a DJing booth. Um, empowerment for um, me also um, incorporates youth leadership um, and that is something that we do very well at Fact for Peace. Uh, Fact for Peace are able to consult young people on decisions and decision, um, decision making within the organisation in terms of what to do and where and the future of the organisation is going. Um, we are then given support from experienced staff members like myself to other young people in terms of how um, they can do things and how can, they can do things better. And then we're also very good at making sure that the young people that have achieved and gone um, quite well within their sporting career or just in their, uh, just in their life or the changes that they've made, we're putting them on a stool where their other young people and the um, younger generation are able to view them as role models, but not just any ordinary role models, but positive role models in a way where they can say, if I ever wanted advice or if I ever wanted to make um, some sort of changes that it comes from there. Um, so another really important aspect of empowerment is celebrating young people and their achievements. So the programme I'm from is called Putting Our Roots, which is one of the 31 projects under Our Bright Future. And as part of Putting Our Roots, we have a model called the Youth Star that we use. Um, so part of this, we rate ourselves on various aspects. So it could be well-being, it could be employment, it could be how we're go achieving goals in our lives. So we we set these out on our star and then for each point we write a goal and a target that we want to meet. And this is a really individual process. We do it on a one-to-one -one with the leaders. And really it's empowering us because it's given us the control to make differences in our lives in areas we've recognised. And personally with my um, interest in mental health and well-being this is really important it's similar to a model where they actually use an nhs um, inpatient unit called a recovery star so it's the same kind of principle um but really it's about celebrating people when they achieve stuff what whatever that means to them it could be something really small could be something really big it's about empowering people through the achievements they make So questions to ask yourself when trying to empower young people are how do young people lead slash make decisions within the organisation? Are there examples of peer to peer support and, more, and or role models? And are young people and their achievements recognised and celebrated? So we said that a good quality youth project values equality and provides equal opportunities for young people participating. So this means to make sure that your project's accessible to each person that's um, a participant. So we've got a few examples of projects that have done this below again. So sadly, Jack couldn't be here today, so I'm going to read his example. Um, so Jack said that a good quality youth project is diverse and inclusive. So his example was about a project called My Life, My Choice, who have a wide variety of projects that suits the needs of each participant so that they can find something to get involved with. And they also make adaptations to the session to suit each individual person's needs. Um, now I'll pass over to Ashley for her example. Ashley, are you there? It would help if I unmuted myself. My bad, <laughs> again. Right, a good quality youth programme is having different perspectives involved in the process. So this means that there's from all walks of life with all different experiences, perspectives and opinions involved in creating the project, running the project, being involved in changes or opportunities. So my example is Youth Move, 
they are an organisation that support families, individuals and schools all across life Bristol. Um, young people are involved in running projects such as youth opinions, inters, sen seniors and urban escape. Um, they also have agencies come in from outside of the organisation if they feel that another agency might be able to inform or be a better um, yeah, information, knowledge for young people on a chosen topic. And yeah, young people are just free to make their own choices. If they want to learn about something, they will go to their person, um, like a staff member, say to them, and then they'll be able to sort that out. So we also said that a good quality youth project is diverse and is made accessible for all in its production. So I give the example of the disability project in Hull, um, who co-produced the whole project with a group called PAD, which stands for People's Awareness of Disability Discrimination. So PAD are a group of young people with various disabilities who worked with us to ensure that the full project was relevant, accessible and catered for each person's individual needs. So questions to ask yourself around equality is how do you ensure the different perspectives are considered and included? Do the young people involved represent the diversity in their community? And how can organisations prove that they're accessible and run inclusive, inclusive activities to suit each young person? So the next heading is community. And I did a quick Google and looked at the definition and that is having the same place or interests in common. But I think COVID has sort of shown you don't need to be in the same place. And I think the Community Lottery Fund also shows that you don't necessarily have to have the same interests initially. For me, I think it's really important to get people coming together and collaborating and that sense of community that comes with it. So our points for this are helping young people be actively involved in making a change in their community raising awareness and tackling local issues and finally being fun, interactive and engaging. So community to me is about being able to actively make a change and some of the stuff that we do at Head Start is create events and projects to build self-confidence. So um, we, we use these events as a way to raise awareness and tackle local issues. We also create opportunities to network. So we partner with council members, board directors, head teachers to work on issues in the schools, in the youth zones, in the local environment. And we support young people to lead change. And the way we do this is that we make sure that all of our projects and everything we do is entirely youth led and that there are different branches um, such as peer mentoring, which I was actually part of, where um, you mentor um, someone younger than you transitioning in different stages of school and there's also the CASA program that we have where young people can express themselves creatively, creatively, creatively <laughs> um, so that they can be a part of anything. Have we got Kane? I know he was trying to join in. Yeah, hi, can you hear me and see me? I can definitely hear you and I can see you. Fantastic. So do you okay. want to just do a quick intro, Kane? I know you were having real troubles with the Teams app. Yeah, a bit about myself. I'm Kane. I'm 20 from uh, West London, originally from South East London. Uh, I love working with young people. I have a passion for leading and encouraging and motivating young people to do better. Uh, I've come from a bit of a, I've come from a challenging background myself, so hence why I want to impact the future and guide and lead young people to do better. So that's, that's a bit about myself. Uh, should I go on to about the raising awareness and tackling local issues? Perfect, yeah. Yep, oh, so, so London Gang Exit is an organisation set up by the Metropolitan Police and they work with local communities, I believe, to better communities and better the lifestyles of people growing up. Um, they work with people that's 
being arrested or people that's vulnerable and they kind of mentor one-to-one and get them support to go go in a better path in life. Should I talk about a quality youth programme? Yep, go for it, Kane, yeah. So what I've got here for a quality youth programme is a good quality youth programme is where leaders come together with young people and raise awareness and tackle local issues. Young people having certain perspectives and not having many opportunities. So a quality youth programme would connect and link young people to opportunities and support them during vulnerable times. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, a good quality youth programme is fun, interactive and engaging. For us at Skyroad, this means having youth-led programmes and projects. Something we often lose focus on due to funders' outcomes. These youth-led programmes aim to build confidence, increase leadership, improve resilience, depending on the needs of our young people. We essentially try to create a space for young people to unwind and become, become comfortable. This encourages en en engagement. And I believe over time, having fun, being interactive and engaging, having an engaging environment has a knock-on effect on in achieving all the statements we have discussed throughout this presentation. So in thinking about community, we should ask ourselves, how, how are we encouraging young people to connect within the community? Is the project fun, interactive and engaging? And what have young people been involved in to make a change within their communities in the past? Um, so all of these questions I would put under each slide, like I said at the start, we'll share with you at the end. As well as this presentation, we've also created some other resources. This includes a checklist where you can see the different points that we think creates a quality youth project. In addition to this, we've also explained each point with different case studies to um, give an in-depth explanation. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we have a Twitter page that is people underscore lead. And on that slide, you can also find our different social media handles. We are going to address some of the questions that were asked in the chat. The first question is by Jenny, who has said, do we feel consulting young people is enough or should there be a move by adult-led youth provision to be great and delegate? Have young people, have have a group of young people in South West currently deciding how 500k should be spent in the area and what on and who they feel is best placed to deliver? Should we be asking about decision making from youth applications? Does anyone want to answer or should I answer? <laughs> Kenny. Go, Kenny. Um, so in terms of, I would, I would always say it's um, very, very important. I think, yeah, I think instead of just involving young people or just having um, young people um, they're um, just, I think for some of the young people, it's a thing where they don't want to see it as this tokenistic, where they're just involved and they're not actually making decisions. Um, and the reason why I say it's very, very important. So giving those young people um, the freedom, again, with the adequate support needed to decide how that 500,000 is allocated in the area, because the way I see it is where the funding is coming from, uh, um, those whoever is given those funding, they are not the ones in those areas. It is those young people. So they um, know what is best. They are seeing it and they are living it on a day to day life and um, they are facing whatever challenges that they are in um, southwest London or wherever it is. So I think having them making the decision of where that money is spent on how that money is spent is very crucial because it's tangible, not just only to them, but tangible to the changes that would come from it. Thank you, Kenny. That was really helpful. Yeah, I think I'd also add to that. I think that was a really great point that Kenny made. Um, but I also think these are our communities. We're, we're the young people living there and we're going to grow up to have jobs there and have friendships there. 
And I think really we need to be at the heart of those conversations because it, it affects us and it will affect us for years to come. So I think it's really important that young people are seen as just as important as adult people in the same roles. And actually there should be there should be that respect and that um, voice given to young people because it, it really is our place to have a say as well. Thank, thanks, Lauren. That's really helpful. I mean, I will flag the, the area in its Torbay in down on the English Riviera in Devon. And it's really, really interesting because what the statistics tell us is so many young people leave that area because of lack of opportunities, lack of skills, lack of employment. So we're really, really hopeful that if we're, we're putting the power into younger people's sort of hands, that we'll see that we won't see that drift away, that, that people will be encouraged to stay in the local area. I don't know if that's something anybody, you know, any of you guys have experienced, but it's a real challenge, you know, for parts of the particularly rural communities. I think, I think yeah. we're Fat for Pieces, so Fat for Pieces is based in uh, East London, Newham, which I think, I think is one of the poorest boroughs. And, uh, I don't know what statistic, but I think it's one of the poorest boroughs. Um, and again, similar to that area, a lot of young people do not stay. But in the actual area where Fat Police is located, it's it's like a small town, North Woolwich, a very, very small town in the middle of two um, places. And I think just having Fat for Peace there as a medium or a somewhere for young people to go to allowed young people to stay and it then drew more young people outside of North Village. So um, our current retention rate is we have more people from like um, neighboring boroughs. Um, I think it's Lambeth um, and like Barking and Dagenham coming into Fat for Peace more than the ones actually in Newham. So again, it will start off as keeping those young people, but then as things start to grow and word starts to spread, you start getting neighbouring and more young people just coming directly because that's that one spot or where there's opportunities flying through. Great. Thanks, guys. That's really useful. Um, one more thing, Jenny. Um, I think consulting young people in, in any project, co-designing with them is always empowering for young people. And I think it's important to remind young people the impact that has on them, like what outcome they've achieved by being part of consulting a project how much empowerment that there is in that um, leadership skill is in that I don't know planning and there's so many things attached to that and I think young people knowing what comes with co-designing co the project is is immense it's it's very powerful and it's, it, I think it's important for young people to know that as well. I do agree Rahina and it was interesting because five of them recently um, were invited to interview the new director of children's safeguarding at the local council. So they were part of a panel who interviewed the candidates and fed into the person who eventually got that role. And I think that was really, um, they were confident enough to challenge the applicants about the answers they gave to the interview questions and even got, you know, brave enough when one asked, have I answered it? They said, no, you haven't actually which I thought was quite astounding. So, yeah, I think you've made some really good points. And But, I, you know, I'll pass it on to other questions. But thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and the second question is by Lorraine, who said, our projects lead, uh, lead, our project lead tells us that, and that to engage young people effectively takes time, effort, commitment and resources. How can you convince local authorities, etc., to invest in this area? Um, I'll go on that, that one. That's all right. Um, so I think a lot of people have this perception of young people that it will take a lot of time and effort. Um, but what I found when trying to engage with young people is to give them a say in what's going to be happening. So going back to co-design, um, if young people have a say in how you're going to engage them, what learning is going to take place, they'll feel important, they'll feel like they've had a say and that will empower them and it'll make them want to continue to engage and continue to do the things that they're doing. Um, so yeah, I think it's um, it's really important to, to let young people have a say and maybe even 
gather a group of young people to take to the the project leads just to to show them like this this is the the group of amazing young people have put together they they're really wanting to engage they're really wanting to 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 get somewhere um so i, I think that that would be a start co-design is still a, a massive thing in in this question i, will, I, I also just, go on yeah. go on yeah. <laughs> sorry everyone um just to add to what, what Kim said, I really I agree with that. And I think one of the biggest things as well is the, the reward of having young people in part of the co-design of, of a process of, of a project is that when the, the longevity of the project will be much better, the fact that it will keep going and it will almost start to reproduce, reproduce itself, you'll have young, those young people bring in a lot more other young people because their passion for the project will shine through in and of itself. And before you know it, like it will have its own legs. Those people will carry the project on because they won't want it to end. Um, so I think it's just thinking about the, re the rewarding part of having um, young people involved in the process as well. I feel quite strongly about this point, actually, um, to do sort of my passion. I think when you're investing in young people, you're not just investing in your program, you're investing in their well-being, their mental health, their job prospects, what they can put on their CV, what networks they can make. So it's not just in the context of a youth program and that person. Mm -hmm. Actually, this can change people's complete outlooks and direction in life and not only that if you have a group of people and you've changed their perspectives and their lives and then that's gonna ripple out as well and then before you know you've sort of you've invested in the whole community um and it's kind of what happened to myself when I joined the National Lottery Youth Programme I um I had very um small expectations but I had that confidence that was invested in me um and it made such a difference. So I think even though it does take time, it does take effort, what you're getting out of it is so much more than just a youth project. I also think just to like touch on the time project, I mean, sometimes depending on every young person at their time and different um, organisations, different areas um, face different challenges, but just in terms of the time frame, I think sometimes it's not always about time, but when engaging young people um, based on experience and just being a young person myself, there needs to be a level of transparency from the get-go. So there, we want to know that, okay, what is it that you're asking from us and what is it that you want us to do? And then they also need to know um, what, what they are expecting or what they can get from it. So there needs to be a level of transparency from the get-go. And if it's not something that they can um, do um, or get something initially from it, but there's, a, there's something in the long run or there's a way that you can help them develop in the long run. There just needs to be that level of transparency from the get-go. Thank you. Um, and the third question is, do you think that youth organisations slash youth workers have the right skills to do co-designing really well? Or is there a need for funders to support with training rather than just expecting projects to do it? Um, I would also like to take this on sorry um so yes i i completely agree that um training around co-design does need to be given um because one of my first roles when i was working on the talent match humber project was to evaluate the use of co-production within projects um and talent match was our talent match uh, model was actually built around co-design um, and evaluating the projects even though that was part of the bid that they'd put in and saying how they're going to co-design with young people when I actually went to evaluate the project it was apparent that they wasn't really using co-design at all it ended up just being consultation or tokenism um, so we needed to do a lot of work with these um, providers to actually teach them what real co-design is um, so yeah I think training does need to be given around this um, I'd also like to add um, that upskilling youth workers is probably really important, especially during this pandemic. Um, Post-COVID, we're probably going to up youth workers are going to need a lot of skills, upskilling in their skills because of um, youth work, social work leading a lot into youth work, youth works leading a lot into social work. So I think it's important for funders to recognise that as well, that rather than just delivering projects and expecting projects to be done with certain outcomes 
step one is getting youth workers to actually know how to do code design anything run any sort of project to be fair I know a lot of youth workers do know how to do it at the back of their mind but it, they need some sort of structure so yeah, upskilling youth workers is probably quite important especially during this pandemic there's also a question um it's an interesting one because it's from um i think it's julia who's put out how confident you all appear and are which you are all amazing as, as i tell you all the time um but what is really keen is the key is that they you know not everyone is like this from the start and what um julia was wanting to ask is what kind of key things help with your confidence what's a good support mechanism for confidence building can i tell you no, Oh, I'm after you, Jemima. Yeah. Whoever's after. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think for me, in my personal experience, when I first started off as a participant, I wasn't confident at all. Um, and I think one of the youth workers kind of put me a little bit under a wing. And I think one of the most things that kind of inspired my self confidence and my um, self esteem was having her believe in me and say no you can do it because I know you can do it and having just having someone that genuinely believed in me and believed that I was going to do something kind of made me think okay well I do have these skills I do have the confidence I can do these things because people believe that I can do it and I started to then believe in myself following from that and I think having the kind of and another thing was getting feedback from doing things so say if I did something and I wasn't sure whether it went well or not you know if you already don't believe in yourself or don't have that kind of confidence you are going to assume or will nitpick on the little things that didn't go as well but for to have the same mentor kind of come back to you and say no you did really really well you inspired all these people all these people smiling like this is what this person said having that kind of feedback is a real confidence booster I don't know who was after me Danny, did you want to say something? Well, I'm standing. Right, I can't. Any, anyone else? I can't cut that. Another girl can. All right. Um, yeah, I was going to say, in terms of, for me, so it's, I'm very, I'm a bit different to Jemima, where I was, I've kind of always been confident, but um, the difference with mine was, I think I had somebody come and tell me that look Kenny you are very very confident and you are like one of the few that are very very confident and me understanding that and understand understanding the role I played within the academy just not to not just to myself but to my to my peers allowed me to then put uh, like use my confidence to uplift others now it happened in a way where it was more there was no like strategy there was no anything it was just literally me knowing what role I played within the organization and within my peers and how that some things that I do and knowing that some people are looking at me um, a certain way helped other people step out of their comfort zone and um, try new things and also another good thing in terms of like just getting everyone's you have to kind of get to know everyone so like I think with us as a team like we've done like loads of little stuff where we're able to get to know each other on a personal level, but then also understanding each other on a personal level where we're able to challenge each other and put everyone's like, um, know where, where everyone's comfortability is at and then also push people a little bit to like, okay, look, you can do this. We believe in you, similar to um, Jemima, having that, having a group of people, one person believing in you, even though you know that is your, like you're uncomfortable there, but by the time you know it, you then reach a level of comfortability to where it's like, you know what, that is nothing new and I'm able to do it. And I'd also like to say, I think one thing that's a confident booster for anyone, regardless of age, is no one knows your story. You know your story, you're the best. So when you're when it goes to when it when you're out there standing in an audience and you think, why are they staring at me like that? Or, oh my God, people probably already know this. Nobody knows it like you do. Nobody has your lived experiences. Nobody has walked your journey in your shoes. And it's always important to remember that. So always, like, it's hard at the start. Don't get me wrong. I am a very nervous bunny 
generally, but it, it is also always rem- always important to remember that no no one's holding your cards. Everyone's different. As many loads of people have similarities, but no one is the same, and that's what initially com- in, builds my confidence. Yeah, I think they're all really good points. Um, And I think the theme which I was kind of thinking of as well is that it's not either an either or thing. You're not either confident or not. Everyone has those skills and everyone can be confident and assertive. And it's about fostering that in people and building it up. Um, So I don't think it's as simple as, you know, you're confident, you're not. I think everyone has a voice and everyone has something to say. And it's about giving people with the opportunity to make that heard. And that's how it builds confidence. Um, but yeah, I, I think everyone can be confident. I think the next question is from Ed, who said it's fantastic that young people are getting more opportunities to shape programs, projects and organisations and long overdue, but that can be demanding work. I would be very interested to hear your thoughts on whether young people should be paid for their time and expertise. I'll take this one. Um, for the charity I work at, at Get There Girls, we make sure that we pay all the young people because although it helps to support them financially, it also shows that they do have value because if it was an older individual, you would pay them. It's not something that you would question. And for us, it's really important just because of their age, if they do have the skills and ability to be able to do it, they should be paid for their time. And yeah, that's what I'd like to say on that one. Can I just um, just add to what Kiana said? I think that's like when she said that, I was like, that is really, really important. I think one of the biggest ways to get young people to feel involved in the process and the co-designing process and feeling like they are important is to feel like they are valued. And one way to show someone that they are valued is to pay them for their time. Just to say that, you know, you are a part of this and we are taking what you're saying seriously because I think when you're a younger person quite often you you feel like your opinion isn't being taken as seriously just because you feel like underqualified or that you're not as important as the older people in the room. And I'd also like to add um, I know that giving money to young people isn't always an easy thing as well with with money just being a general issue sometimes vouchers work as well and just like feeding young people I feel like food is at the heart of all young people food is the way um so even if it's not giving young people a 10 pound voucher or offering them beverages and having some sort of drink and a little refreshment is always there's some I think there's some leeway to that as well yeah, I volunteered at, um, before I started working on Talent Match. I was a young volunteer. Um, so I wasn't paid for my time, but the things that I got out of it was absolutely amazing and I couldn't have, have asked for more from them really. Um, and at the end of the my volunteering, um, end of the few months of me volunteering we ended up going on a residential um which I thought was amazing it was an opportunity that I just I'd been given because of the the time that I'd I'd given to them um and then after I stopped volunteering um because of all of the hard work I'd done and because of how much they give me so that I give back I then was taken on by um talent match to um be a be an intern um so the things that I got out of it, it wasn't money. I ended up getting a job out of it in the end. Um, so that's like even better. So so I think it's different for everybody. I think it would depend on their circumstances and the time that they are given, um, given to, to the organisation and the effort that they put in. Amazing. I think we can... Uh, we will hopefully get time just to take one more question but I just I'm really conscious of time creeping up and I know the guys wanted to get from everyone else as well what their takeaways were I don't know was it Kim that was gonna ask for that so we don't miss that opportunity so um 
again, we was meant to use Mentimeter. It was meant to come up in nice flashy bubbles on screen so you could all see it. Um, but unfortunately, it's not working. Um, so I'm going to put the question in the chat again. Um, so it is just, I do have it copied, so I should be able to just paste it in. Um, so, is there anything um, that you're going to take away from today's session? So, any of learning from us, um, anything that you could go and give people advice on, just anything, what are your takings from, from today's session? Oh, did I, did I say to write it in the chat? Sorry, I've put, yeah. <laughs> and while they're doing that, would you all like to just say a takeaway that you would like to give them as in yeah what is your top tip for moving forward with youth voice and why organizations should do it um i'll go first if no one wants to um i would say my biggest takeaway is that young people are the future and I think that we would I think a lot of people think that young people don't want to be involved or have that impression that they're not sure but I think young people want to be in those spaces and I think it's really important especially going forward with everything that's happened that young people are in these spaces to give their opinion to talk so that not just so that it's relevant for them but so that everyone has this one kind of streamlined idea I think sometimes we can get lost in um like generational gaps and people can kind of be like oh I'm I don't know what young people want I don't know what young people think so we're just going to leave them to it but I think join join connecting everyone up I think that's the key that's my takeaway I think for me, my takeaway has been that people want to listen and people do value what we're saying. Um, and for me, that means a lot to kind of get that feedback from everyone. Um, and what I would say is a really key message around you voice, especially with COVID and all the problems that's going to cause. I think there is nothing more valuable than investing in young people. Um, we are going to go forward and make the changes that need to happen in the future. We're making changes now. We have a voice. We're experiencing things that no one else has gone through a uh, uh, pandemic. You know, we're, I think there's nothing more valuable than investing in individuals and in their achievements and their well-being. Um, yeah, so that's what I would say. I think it's a really valuable thing and you can get so much out of that. I think it's important that the big people all keep young people seats at the table. I think it's really important that we're invited and we're given equal seats. I think someone's mentioned that in the chat as well. We have equal seats to all the the big, the more important people. We're just to remember we're just as important. Um, I think as well just recognizing that each young person is different that I think that everybody sees young people as like just one giant group everyone's exactly the same everyone thinks the same way but recognizing that everybody has their own needs has their own stories has their own like futures and dreams and I just think it's important to recognize that and like just use that as a way to move forward I think for me, it's just also understanding that um, young people um, sometimes were were a lot wiser or um, wiser than you, than you think. Because something has always said to me is, I'm always, I don't know the same, something about, I'm always told I've got um, a wise head on a young man, whatever the saying is. But yeah, um, constantly told that. So I just understand, um, I think just understanding that young people um, have the capacity and capability to understand things that you may not think that they understand but it may just be from a different perspective which if you give time could actually make sense and help you in the future and one thing um that i would like uh, everybody to take away from the meeting is 
because I'm passionate about supporting people with disabilities so I work with people with disabilities to to create the project so co-produce everything with them because I don't have a disability myself I can only guess what they need but they're the ones that actually know what they need so that's the same with young people that's the same with everybody it's the same with adults so if you're trying to target an audience and work with people and support people the people that you're trying to target are the people that you would need to co-produce the project with and I think that's really important just to if you have a question for a young person or are wondering something just ask a young person because they'll always have an answer. Uh, can I, can I speak? speak? Um, yes, my, my take would be young people are the most impact, impactful people in, in living age because they are the leaders of the new school they are going to teach the next generation of youth how to grow and what's going to happen in the next future for example my generation or our generation is full of technology whereas my grandparents generation weren't full of technology so we now have the eligibility to teach them and show them how to use technology and now the younger youth of us is well for me for example be gangs and violence so coming from that kind of lifestyle I can now inspire and lead young people going through that in a better way, if you kind of get what I mean. They're basically the leaders of the new school. You gonna go, Danny? Yeah. Uh, for me as well, uh, there are fresh set of eyes on things. Like you might be struggling to change them for you and because young people are growing up in a different generation with different technology or skills. It might be that fresh thing that can spot something and change it instantly if given the opportunity. Wowzers. And to time, which is incredible. Um, oh, Ash, sorry. I didn't mean to forget you. Do you, do you want to jump in? I don't think there's really much more to say. Like. Jemima said my first point which is young people are the future and they need like youth workers to support them and motivate them to do better because they want to be better they want to do better they want to change you know um I don't think there's really much more to take like away other than don't ever like kind of be ashamed of where you come from or like what you like your background because you can still go on to achieve so much you're like still capable of so much with the right help with the right support and knowledge and information you can do whatever you essentially want and that is because of youth work and young people and everything so, yeah amazing absolutely incredible so proud i'm actually getting tearful it was incredible can we have a massive round of applause everyone i know we can't hear you all i think we should all join in absolutely brilliant um we hope that you all enjoyed that you took away from it as much incredible inspiration as i do every time i meet these guys spread the word young people are the future young people have the answers they can do amazing stuff um and you've just seen proof of it here and there um thanks everyone we'll be staying on for a bit longer so um if you've got any further questions then please let us know but um incredible and thanks for joining us Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye guys. Thanks. Thank you all. We can stop recording now, Elizabeth. Okay. Switch it off. If young people, you can stay on. That'd be amazing. <laughs>